Ramble. Thank you to BetterHelp and Chime for sponsoring this week's episode. Hello, and Hello. welcome to this episode of You Can Sit With Us. I'm one of your hosts, Matt. I'm here with Maggie. Hello. Becky. Hello. Rachel. Hello. And of course, Rainy. Hey. How is everyone <laughs> doing today? We're good. We're Whoa. good. Just coming off a hot weekend. Ooh, a hot was weekend hot, hot take. Weekend. What'd you hot do, what you do, girl? Wow. I did not do anything oh. hot. I just <laughs> needed an adjective and it was there. Um, um, let's see. I went to the flea market and then uh-oh. I had dinner with Zach's grandmother. Aw, Grammy. Hot. 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 The flea market Grammy. and Granny. Yeah. Um, my so weekend fun. was filled with hot gossip, as <gasps> Rachel and Matt both learned, because I broke down the Vanderpump Rules drama. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. For them. I I've didn't sent even know truth. any of the key players. And now two Ooh. Toms. Two Toms. <sighs> Tom Toms. Toms. I've sent Tom-toms. multiple like voice memos to Keith whenever there's an update. Hector, David Dang's boyfriend, is the only person I know other than my best friend Hannah that still watches the show. No way. So I've been texting with him and mm-hmm. Quasi's wife, Courtney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it 60 is- seconds on the clock. Give me, give it to me. Oh. Go. Oh. Can you, do you think you can do it in 60 seconds? I could do it. I think I could do it in a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so Vanderpump Rolls. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait I'm going to start I'm going to start it. Uh, oh, yeah, let me time it. Maybe two minutes. No, okay. two minutes. Oh, no. 60 seconds, she said. But there's got to be a lot of background if you've never seen the show. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want to see how far you get in one minute. Okay. 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 Well, well, it's like one or two. New, one. new stuff has happened. One. Like, there's new updates every day that we're learning. Uh. It's ever evolving. And whatever's Go. applicable. Okay, so Vanderpump Rules is a spinoff show from The Real Housewives. The Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. Lisa Vanderpump, owns yep. a bunch of restaurants. Yep. So at her first restaurant, or not her first restaurant, but the first restaurant the show's based on, Sir, yep. there were these two, ser- there was a server named Tom and then his best friend also named Tom. They, you know, years pass, they make their own restaurant Tom, called Tom Tom. Tom. Yep. Then they go on to make a new restaurant called Schwartz and Sandy based on their last name, Tom Schwartz, Tom Sandoval. Now, throughout the years, they have met many people in their lives. Uh-huh. Yeah, One person have. is DJ James Kennedy. He is this British DJ. Um, oh, everyone on the show is problematic also. They're all they're all bad people. This is true trash TV. Um, DJ James Kennedy was dating a girl named Raquel. Raquel did beauty pageants. She is currently like 29 years old. Same what? Oh, yeah. No. She did beauty pageants. <laughs> um, in this latest season, Tom Schwartz, our first Tom, there was a rumor going around because he and his wife Katie just got a divorce. So the whole new season about is about sort of their divorce, how they're working on it. Oh, man. Oh. I didn't even get to the drama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can okay, keep going. Yeah, okay. You so, get one more minute. Okay. Yeah, so I just they, wanted to see how far you could get. Not I, that literally, far. there's just so much background that you have to know uh-huh. to know how insane this was. How juicy it is, you mean. Yeah. yeah. And it also made Side me go note, like, should oh. we have dinner at TomTom? Tom? No. Oh. <laughs> We do not support. We do not stand. We're a team Ariana in this house. Oh, sorry. I so what happened was <laughs> Tom Schwartz, Tom Schwartz, and Tom uh, Sandoval BFFs. Uh, Tom Schwartz divorces Katie. Mul- or Katie asks for a divorce. They get a divorce. Um, there's a rumor going around last year, Coachella 2022. Uh huh. 2022, mm-hmm. I think. Um, that Tom Schwartz and Raquel DJ James Kennedy's beauty pageant ex fiance made out. And people <gasps> saw it. So the internet dun, dun, dun. was a buzz. This is but Katie's then, husband? Katie's ex-husband at the time. Okay. So now a tweet goes out. Guys, Tom Schwartz wasn't even at Coachella. So everyone moves on. We're like, okay, whatever. The whole point of this new season is that Raquel is trying to like make out with Tom Schwartz. She just like kind of wants to hook up with him, which in real life we know did allegedly happen at Sheena, not Sheena Shea anymore. Sheena, I don't know what her last name is. Uh, at her wedding, they did hook up. I am hanging on by a thread. By a thread. Okay. So a there's lot another of, I don't girl. Really understand. There's a lot of there's people. There's another gal in the mix. Her name is Ariana. She is, uh-huh. I would say, the least problematic of all of the cast members. She said the least problematic things. She is very openly, she's bisexual. She's very openly um, LGBTQIA, loves, uh-huh. talks about rights and things like that. Like she is a, we like her. We're a fan. She's dating Tom Sandoval for almost nine years now. The relationship did nine start years. with them. Tom Sandoval cheating on his girlfriend, Kristen Doty at the time. Okay. You know, so it started on a basis not great. of not so good. <sighs> not so good. You guys, a bombshell happened last what? weekend, Wednesday night. Let me set the scene. We're at Tom Sandoval's show. He has a cover band, which I think is embarrassing. Um, 
Ariana <laughs> is at his show. She's vibing. She's dancing. She's loving. This is her nine-year partner. Nine-year partner. Okay. They own a house together. Okay. Um, they own dogs together. Uh-huh. She doesn't want to get married ever. She's like not into marriage. So uh-huh. that's where they're at. Um, Tom Sandoval's phone. Somehow she gets a hold of Tom Sandoval's phone. I don't know if he puts it down or whatever. She goes to the bathroom and she's looking. She went and looked at like, I don't know. She was scrolling through. I don't know. Maybe looking for a she picture She went to the bathroom something. to scroll through his phone? Yeah, I don't she's know. She's sus. Or, or she's looking for... I Not do that she's sus, phone. I'm like, she's sus you of took him. a cute picture of me last week. Where is it? Uh-huh. And I'll grab his phone. She finds a video <gasps> of a screen record from uh-huh. Tom Sandoval, her uh-huh. boyfriend of nine years, uh-huh. and Raquel, DJ James Kenny's ex-girlfriend, and Raquel is doing mature things in this video. Then it is revealed. Naked things? Yes. Then uh. it is revealed. There are other saucy text messages from uh. them. And now we find out they've been having an almost six to seven month affair and the Tom that made out with Raquel at Coachella, everybody got the wrong Tom. It was Tom Sandoval because he was at Coachella. Because everyone was just as confused everyone as I am. Everyone thought it was Tom Schwartz, but it was Tom Sandoval. So now the drama is people are like writing bad reviews over their restaurants. The cast, there is no PR team hired. Oh, no PR no. team. Maybe Raquel has one because she hasn't spoken out yet. Tom Sandoval <laughs> has written an insanely bad apology on like a notes app. The restaurants oh, no. have written an insanely oh. bad apology on a notes app. Lala Kent and Sheena and Kristen Doty are just all over their socials saying all sorts of things. And now every day a new thing comes out. Allegedly, they were both wearing these necklaces that had lightning bolts on them to signal their love. Allegedly, they are in love and will be continuing this relationship onward. Hmm. Again, everything is alleged at this time. But Tom Sandoval did confirm in his notes app apology that shit went down. Mm. It's fucking chaos. Tom Sandoval is also 39 and she's 29. So there's like a little bit of an age difference there. Uh huh. And one time Lala called Raquel a Bambi eyed <laughs> Bambi eyed bitch. So people are using oh. Bambi eyed bitch a lot again back in vernacular. Oh boy. Uh huh. Isn't that crazy? Oh, the even more crazy part it was all caught on film. <laughs> they were in the middle of filming, I think for next season. And the producers have already come out and said, because Andy Cohen's like, how many parts is too many parts for a reunion show? Because they did like, I think last season they did like four part reunion. Like it was insane. Um, but the cameras were on. They're contractually obligated to film and to talk about things. And they're talking about, the producers are saying, we're going to nix the last two episodes of the current season of Vanderpump Rules and swap them out for what we have currently learned. So then when we go into the reunion, everyone will be like... Fighting. Well, everyone will everyone know. Everyone will be fighting. I mean, there's no way people, like fans of the show, don't know about this information right now because it's so... Well, they do now, Becky. Chaotic. Thanks to Becky. Do you they, think we have a big... Guys, I like screamed Paul's husband, te- or Paul's husband, Nick's husband, Paul, Paul, texted me. Courtney and I were DMing. It was a whole... The Bravo world is exploding, shattered by this news. And of course, everyone is hashtag Team Ariana. Mm-hmm. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Isn't that bonkers? I liked how there was like a whole sex tape too. <gasps> the sec- well, and you know what? It's actually <laughs> what? not, it's not the first time on the show that somebody has been on video doing. I don't know. There's, there's not like little kids that listen to this, right? Like basically the video was of them masturbating. And like, it's not the first time that's happened on the show. Is that a thing? Yes. Why are people sending videos? I mean, at least like cut your face off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you're famous. Like, cut the, cut the face <laughs> Make off. Make it non-identifiable. If you're a certain level of famous. But it's not bonkers. And this show Bad. has not been relevant in about two or three years. <laughs> this is This is like season one, season two level deception and chaos. What season Jonathan? are they on now? <gasps> and Jonathan, yes. Yeah. Jonathan, who works here, um, actually worked on a season. Should we oh. cut, bring him in? I was like, <laughs> no. how are we involving sweet <laughs> no. Jonathan in this? I did debate being like, Jonathan, you want to come talk about Bravo? <laughs> Jonathan worked on a spinoff show of Vanderpump Rules oh. called Jackson and Brittany Take Kentucky. And it was where Jackson and Brittany, who are also very problematic and not on the show anymore, went home uh, to her hometown of Kentucky. Oh. And did what? 
and do. They what? hung out with Mima. They hung out with her mom. <laughs> Mima was the grandma. They, they made they a beer like cheese. Lived. They just like lived in Kentucky. For yeah, a yeah, cool. Yeah, and worked on they their experienced like experienced a different culture. Mm. Yeah, they worked on their issues and stuff. And Jonathan one day was telling me all about it. So Whoa. we had about an hour long conversation about Vanderpump Rules. Mm. Isn't this chaos, you guys? So that was definitely more than a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, you surpassed last time. It eight. is all oh, is all of my TikTok. It is all of my Instagram. It is all of my. It is like on every media that I follow. Really? You're being served a lot of a lot of content. content. <laughs> a lot of content. And there's a lot of new. Like uh, some stuff is misinformation, and like I said, everything is alleged. Please don't sue me. Yeah, everything is alleged. <laughs> we are not a Bravo news source. We're not a Bravo yeah. news source. I would go to someone like Danny Pellegrino to listen to that. Everything iconic. Yeah. I would go to Hannah Brown. You heard um, it here first. I would, yeah, I would, I would pick other people other than me to be your Bravo source of inspiration. Inspiration. But it's fucking juicy. I knew so little about Vanderpump Rules that way early on when the channel first started, we wanted to do this dog grooming competition. <gasps> at Vanderpump. Mm. And we <laughs> accidentally did it at Vanderpup. And by accidentally, I just meant that I had no idea that it had anything to do with Vanderpump rules when we worked with them. <laughs> um, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, Keith was like, guess where we're going? And I was like, tell me if you see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> tell me if Lisa's there with Jiggy. Aww. She called Jiggy, R.I.P., uh, a little six monster. Yeah. Wow. It oh, was, was so he a cute. horny dog? <laughs> no, he literally looked like he was stuffed and dead. He had like no time. hair and stuff. Yeah. No, he had only hair. He was like a fluffy, like Pomeranian. I thought that's why he had to wear but clothes. But she would hold him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was, was like, shaved under there. I thought he had like alopecia. She? And that's why he had to wear saw clothes his and stuff. Top his fluff. Oh. They yeah. had really cute dogs. Jiggy. Those puppies were really cute. But guys, that's all the tea that I have for you mm. about Vanderpump Rules. For wow. now. That's a lot of tea. For now. It's that's ever evolving. Everything is alleged. We'll see you on TikTok. With we'll your, see you on TikTok. Um, your little microphone. <laughs> we'll give yeah. you an update once the reunion comes out. Just. Whoa. If you are into Becky trash TV. The reunion. Yeah, I was Can like, this I is the only ask? trash TV show I watch where I'm like, this is actually like rotting my brain, but mm. I can't stop. It's been 10 years. <laughs> What's a reunion for? Because don't they all know each other and like live their lives together? The reunion comes out after the whole season is aired and they do oh, so they've all seen it. So they've all seen it. So every once in a while, someone will be like, you called me a bitch. In your confessional. Like, in your confessional. Like, and and they'll uh, talk about it. Or things happen like this in between the end of the season and the um or the mm -hmm. end of filming and the new season. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. a gap where they aren't filming. So, so they, things can happen. Because they're still living their lives. Yeah. So what reality TV do you watch then, Rachel? If you're not watching Vanderpump. If Pumps. you're not watching the VP. I these days, I pretty much only, only, only watch Love Island. Oh, Love Island. There's Ooh. not a current season. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've seen it, but um, <laughs> it was last year. But Love Island UK is mm -hmm. yeah. People love that. the best. Yeah. I love it. What's the premise of Love Island? Um, Ten sexy strangers <laughs> enter the villa. Ten sexy strangers enter the villa. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. the hot new bombshell yeah. Yeah. enters Just the, the villa. villa this week. Thank you, TikTok. Um, it's a bunch of sexy strangers with hot <laughs> British accents who come into a villa looking for love, and they pair up right away, and then they repair as they figure out who they want to be with. Oh, and then bombshells come in and can, like, break them up and... <gasps> Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And then at the end, it's like what couples are left standing and then one one couple can win money. But it really doesn't feel like it's about the competition of it all. It feels like it's about Ooh. like finding someone. The backstabbing drama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Well, there's Casa Amor. What's that? Oh. Is that where people hanky panky? Oh, no. They hanky panky the whole time. It's the most oh. sex positive <laughs> show I've ever seen. Oh. I love it. Wait, what's Casa Amor? Is it a location that? or is it a show? It is a event within the show. Okay. Mm. <gasps> an orgy. <laughs> it's not an orgy. <laughs> it is not an orgy. Okay, so they come in and they couple up right away. And then they're like recoupling sort of all the time. And you'll see who sticks together and who's like floundering kind of recoupling with whoever, right? Mm -hmm. And when new people come in, other people recouple and people get voted out sort of. Mm -hmm. And then about halfway through the show or three-fourths of the way through the show, once you really have – like tried and true couples across the board and like new people come in and new people go right back out because everyone sort of found the person they're vibing with. Mm -hmm. One morning, without warning, they take either all the women 
or all the men, and they cart them off to Casa Amor with no like heads up to anyone. The other people discover that they're gone and then they dump. <laughs> they kidnap them. <laughs> they kidnap them. They go to Casa Amor. And then there's one villa with just the women, one villa with just the men, and they dump 10 new people in each villa. <gasps> 10 new men with the women and 10 new women with Stop. the men. And they have no lo- idea how long they're going to be there. Oh and they encourage God. them. They play games where they have to kiss them to like win things and stuff. And they push and push. And Cheeky. if drama doesn't start happening Cheeky. during those games, <laughs> they'll take photo stills and they'll send them as postcards to the <gasps> other villa. That sounds of, like not a more. That this is like really not stirring the pot. Of other really people. Did he say not a more? Yeah. Not a more. Of other, of <laughs> their <laughs> significant <laughs> other kissing. And then... They have to decide on their own before they see them again, are they going to stick with a new person or go back to the old person? And then they have this whole ceremony. So they're all sitting there either single or coupled up and the people from Casa Amor walk in one at a time. And if they have a partner and you don't, you're now single. But if you have a partner and they don't, they're now single and can be ousted or you both have new partners or you're both single and you chose each other. But you have no idea. It is Brutal and brilliant Aww. and so good. And sometimes Talk about rejection. This show is like wow. screams a guy rejection will come over and over from again. Casa oh my God. And he'll be all single again. and he'll like rechoose his girl he's been with the whole show and he'll be like, Yeah, baby, of course I had to come back to you. I had to come back to you. And then they'll pray it in the girl from the other one who he was making out <laughs> with and kissing. And then she'll get together and have like literally tea or lemonade or wine mm. or whatever with the old girlfriend and be like, Yeah, no, we were sleeping in the same bed every night. He was kissing me. He told me he was going to bring me back, and then he didn't at the last second. (gasps) Whoa. Drama. Drama, drama, drama. User. User It's really good. It's really good. And the most brilliant part about the whole show is there are no camera ops. There are no producers sitting there being like, and what did you think, Matt? It's all um, on remote heads, like all the cameras all around, and the confessionals are on this like remote thing, and everything's really... So they start to feel like... I think they start to forget more than other shows that they're being filmed Mm -hmm. because there's like people aren't hosting these ceremonies. Sometimes the host comes in, but often not often everything's done on like a closed circuit text message. So everyone will get a text being like, and now tell everyone this it's time for a recoupling ceremony or whatever. Mm. So like without that, like manipulative interference, there's also like no rules. Yeah. There are basically no rules. People are having sex under the covers all the time. It's good. And you like UK more than... <laughs> Rainy's like, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, yeah, the American one is trash, I hear. I've only watched yeah, the UK that's what, one. Uh, that's what I've heard of the The accents as well. really help. Oh. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I'm sorry, they do. I do have to watch it with closed captioning on because the accents oh are God, yes. hefty. Mm. Oh, yeah. In these last few years, we've all faced a lot of tough challenges And it was really interesting to learn new things about how we adapt. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. Here at You Can Sit With Us, we absolutely love therapy. It's great to have someone impartial to sort of bounce ideas off of to figure out why we're feeling the way we do, and someone that it's really easy to connect with. It empowers us to be the best version of ourselves. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is amazing. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash sit with us today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sit with us. Do your financial goals feel out of reach? They don't have to be. With Chime's Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start building credit with your own money through on-time payments and small everyday purchases like groceries, streaming, and gas. Members can see an increase of 30 points to their credit scores on average. Chime reports your payments to the major credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. All with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. Start making your financial dreams a reality with Chime. Signing up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash sit with us. That's chime.com slash sit with us. 
The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Based on a study conducted by Experian, Credit Builder members observed an average 30-point FICO score 8 increase after 8 months with regular on-time payments. Results may vary. See Chime.com for details. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any all-point Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Speaking of reality. Reality behind the scenes. We got a bunch of questions from everyone about their tour, the Try Guys tour Mm -hmm. and the documentary about Mm -hmm. the tour. So we're digging back into the archives. Mm -hmm. We're basically going to be looking at in the future, different videos that obviously, you know, the boys perspective on, they were there. They, yeah, you know, you saw talked, them. you saw them, mm-hmm. been there, done that. Um, this is our perspective. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we saw. Our this retrospective we perspective. Our mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. Yes. What do you remember most about them being on tour? Them being on tour? So that Keith was gone. I think, yeah, that Keith was <laughs> gone. And then like, once you see the show, you're just like, oh. Like you forget everything, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you kind of forget all that stress and all the stuff leading up to it where you're just like, wow, that was like so freaking good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this I just, big. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember like the audience just goes wild, <laughs> like so wild, like so loud. And you're like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. like the scale is so much bigger <laughs> than I thought it was going to be of like all the audiences, like even like yeah. the theaters and stuff they were in were just like so many people. Yeah. Like, I think that's what. The I still remember the most. Yeah, all the screening. <gasps> yeah. How about you, Maggie? Mm-hmm. I remember the anticipation of them going on for the first time. They had a playlist and they had like, I remembered uh, the countdown and it was like Blackpink before mm-hmm. they would come on and it'd be like a countdown going backwards. And I remember sitting in the audience getting really excited for the first time I watched them live. And it was crazy. It I have never... I, I had seen smaller performance, like they've obviously re- performed before, but seeing them on at different theaters in our hometown, internationally, in New York, and being amongst friends and family. It was crazy. International tour. International tour as <laughs> International well. tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do remember being in dress rehearsal and being nervous for them. Um, I remember being overly positive, and I'm like, you guys, like, don't worry. It's going to be great. But I remember it being very rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, they had to make a lot of changes i think they had a set piece that they didn't end up traveling with internationally because it was like such a big thing um but seeing them work with like a tour manager and putting it together and putting the music together and stage and Mm -hmm. all the cues was wild there's just so much that goes into it yes yeah so many pieces yes you wouldn't even think about Mm -hmm. and then also when you're traveling you got to redo that everywhere else every every place you go yeah yeah. So much work. And it was like a whole crew that would travel with them in yeah. the bus that had like the set pieces and stuff and it had to go in and out. I remember Zach calling me and he'd be like, yeah, <laughs> sleeping on the bus was interesting. Like, I mean, Keith, I'm sure even had a harder time. <laughs> well, I remember the first time we walked on the bus right before they left. They were like, we'll show you what it looks like. And I was like, Keith, where are you going to sleep? I was like, this looks like it's big enough for me. Yeah. It's going to be on the floor. Like, I was like, you're going <laughs> to curl into a little ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every night. Yeah. Apparently it was bad. one of the last like buses they, they could have possibly gotten for that oh. tour. Oh. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't get the cream of the crop. Yeah. No, I mm-hmm. felt bad because I was traveling for work so much at this time. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. I didn't get to go to a lot of the stuff that you guys went to. Yeah. I know you were I there. never saw the bus. I never saw... Yeah. The dress rehearsal or anything. You didn't miss the much first the time. <laughs> the, first, the first one I saw was down in San Diego. Oh, yeah. When we went down to San Diego and saw it. Mm-hmm. Which is that's that was cool. And then I saw it obviously like in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So the first question is mm-hmm. how stressed were we for them and how hard were they working leading up to it? I feel like there were, I mean, Keith was always gone because he did all of the music for the show. Mm-hmm. So he was working with the. Uh, I think Jay, who was doing the uh, producing of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But even a lot of the uh, audio that was pre-recorded was Keith layered on Keith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just the four boys singing. It was Keith filling in harmonies for things. Yeah. Yeah. And so I remember that was just like crazy having to go in and go into the studio all the time Mm -hmm. to record and Mm -hmm. obviously write the music, Mm -hmm. write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
I remember Zach going with Keith to the recording studio and them having, I remember him coming back being really excited about being able to do all that together. Mm -hmm. I know that was like flexing so many creativity brains. I just remember Eugene was really stressed about doing his whole drag routine Mm -hmm. because there was like wig reveal stuff going on. There's a lot of choreo and stuff. So he was, you know, worried about getting all a lot of, of projections. Down. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, there are a lot of moving elements mm-hmm. in just that one scene. So I know it was like if one thing went wrong. Oh yeah. I remember him being really disappointed that like his wig fell off or something mm-hmm. in the, the, in the one that they had actually filmed for mm-hmm. the documentary. So he was like, it wasn't my best one that ended up in the documentary. So mm-hmm. he was really upset. That that's not the one that was like, immortalized oh, in the film. Because yeah. they didn't you know? film every performance no, fully. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Eugene also had his coming out video at the uh, same time. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It had just come out that um like for Pride. And then uh I believe their LA show was like mid to late June of yeah. that same year. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. literally within weeks of each other. Yeah. Because that was, he like didn't sleep before that video, basically, for his mm-hmm. coming out video. He was just working so hard. And there were so many other like people from the community that he brought in for that video. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of coordinating for that. And then also, you know, that was a whole dance routine. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it was basically mm-hmm. like a music video. So it was all, <laughs> he and he created it all himself pretty much. Yeah. So that was a lot of work. So he just didn't sleep. He was stressed. Yeah. yeah. How That's does Eugene deal with stress before big things <laughs> like um, this? <laughs> he drinks a lot of coffee uh-huh. and he'll just stay up like all night for like three nights in a row and then he'll crash for like a full day. Oh my God. I feel like it's not a healthy habit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've told him, but at a certain point I, I can't come I tell him all the you. time. He just <laughs> doesn't listen to me. Yeah. I can't come yeah, from you. Can yeah. you help him when he's that stressed? No. Besides no. like no. set out food? He'll like, <laughs> he'll like complain or like talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And he just wants to talk about it. He doesn't want you to say anything. Mm, yeah. yeah. You know, how do you help Keith deal? Just, okay. What is like, I know Keith is doing Lou Burger right now, Becky. Mm-hmm. How do you support Keith? Does Keith get really stressed about things like this? I don't think he gets stressed so much as he feels a lot of guilt. Oh, like, I feel like that's what he deals with the mm. most. Like right before he was going to New York, there were a lot of um, switch ups that had to happen with the schedule. And so Keith, when he was originally going to be home more, was filming every single day for Try Guys and then had to do Lou Burger afterwards. And then and then came Becky and Keith time. Oh, you felt no. deprioritized. I was. Oh, definitely. But I also that's his like that's his job. That's his work. But like. I think the way that I help him is just by not adding to the stress. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I just try and take as much off his plate when mm-hmm. he's doing these things. Like before the tour, before Lou Berger went off Broadway, right. I, you know, try and do more. Okay. I put out some of your clothes that I know you're going to want to take, or I'll mm-hmm. do this, that, and the other and not really, I guess I, I try Here's not to take it. Routine. Yeah. Here's your hair product. <laughs> yeah. I try to not take it personally if we don't, get a lot of time to spend together because I know like Like you've had 15 years. Okay. Right. I'm like, he's living his dream. What am I going to do? Like be mad that he's doing what he's always wanted to do with his whole life. Like it makes me happy to see him succeeding Mm -hmm. and getting to do these things. Yeah. But I know it definitely like makes him feel heavy. Mm. Yeah. He feels a lot of responsibility for uplifting the different people in his lives, Mm -hmm. which he says in the tour documentary, in case you haven't seen it, he says, you know, I've done certain things with my life, but how am I going to support Lou Berger while also supporting Try Guys while also supporting Becky? How can I do all the things and be enough for all the people? And even the fact that he would ask that just makes him the biggest sweetheart that ever lived. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, he does. I think he thinks about his main goal, I think, because other people helped him so much in life Mm -hmm. when he was struggling is how can he help other people? How can he Mm -hmm. uplift other people in their craft? Or Mm -hmm. if he's successful with something, how can he use that success to help the other projects he's working on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For his, you know, friends that don't have multi-million view (laughs) videos Mm -hmm. with a built-in fan base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. But how did Zach deal yeah. with the like the tour bus, the dancing? I mean, chronic pain, that is no fucking joke. Yeah, he, I mean, 
he je- typically has like a great outlook on how he handles stress, but there were times where he would crack and I, I, he's very much like an external processor. So just being there to listen to him, obviously I ask him and check in with him constantly on like, what can I do right now to help take a little bit of your load off? I know that mm-hmm. the book release was close to the tour and then they were also working on the documentary simultaneously uh, and making sure they got footage for that. Mm-hmm. But chronic pain wise, I mean, performing, traveling was a lot for him. Making sure that he was eating well and taking care of himself was always hard. But just I feel like frequent check ins and making sure that he's just doing the bare minimum that he needs to do to take care of himself so then he can show up and but I remember like seeing him run across stage and like he loves performing so ultimately I think that gave him a lot of creative output and he enjoys doing things like that so I think it was also um almost like medicine for him because he likes being a creative person and Mm -hmm. flexing that brain but also making sure that he's not in too much pain how did you guys communicate during the tour? Were you FaceTimers? Were you texters? Mm, yeah, Were and you I think a broader video messaging? Mm. question could be like, how do you deal with long-term relationships, even if it's temporary for each mm. of you? A long, di- like long distance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did I, what did I say? <laughs> <a> long term. <laughs> how do you deal with long-term relationships? No, uh, sorry. I meant long distance. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I think people struggle with that. Yeah. Like long distance oh, yeah. relationships are hard. Yeah. Was it both of your first times ever being in a long distance relationship? I think so. Or actually, no. had you done it before? Yeah. Well, I had I had to yeah, travel, travel a lot for yeah. work. Yeah. And then when I had finished getting my MBA, I had gone away for like three months for an internship. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So that was. And you, like when I met you, you were working in Portland like three or four days a week yeah. all the time. You flew. Yeah, every week. I used to travel every week. So yeah. Eugene, I had a lot of practice. I feel like. Lots of practice. <laughs> practice. Yeah, lot of practice. Yeah. And what's your main communication style when you're long distance? Usually just texting. Really? And like yeah. maybe calling once a day or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But just like easy, quick, mm-hmm. you know? I feel like we'd be end of day phone call. Uh, just because during the day, I'd either be working long hours and like the only time, or actually no, because like they would be, if, they weren't traveling, they would be touring at night. So it'd be really late phone calls for him and it'd be like very quick. Um, But we're not good at like keeping conversations throughout the day because it's just like in order to, uh, at a certain point, it's just like, let's just hop on the phone later. This is like too much back and forth, Uh especially when you're working. Because you like, you can't have your phone out at work all the time. Yeah, it's just like unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there are some people who sit at a computer all the time, so oh, texting right. is Ooh. no problem. But right. have it out on yeah. their laptop yeah. and stuff. But yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of practice. We had a full year of practice. Yeah, that's right. So I was kind of like, and even before that year of practice, when Keith and I actually first started dating and I was still in college, not that it was long distance, but it was two hours away, and Keith was touring with Mission Improbable. So mm. he was never That man is always around. touring. He's touring. He's a tour yeah. baby. Mm-hmm. Tour baby. He's a tour baby. Doing doing the stage. Loves to perform. Loves to perform. So we're just texters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always think of it in terms of when I'm going to see him next. Mm. So that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Like even right now, I was mm-hmm. like, well, Keith's going to be gone for a month and a half, but it's really only three weeks. And then I'm going to go see him. And then it's going to be like mm-hmm. three more weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he's going to come back and then leave for a couple of days and then come back and then leave for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's broken up. It's broken up. Right? Yeah. But you're right. It is like if you're bookmarking all the times you will see him. Yeah. Focusing on that gives mm-hmm. you like a countdown. Mm-hmm. I really feel for people who are in long distance relationships who don't know when it's going to end like for me that would not be sustainable Mm -hmm. i couldn't i couldn't have a question mark yeah yeah Yeah. what was your because did you see any of the shows with the pyrotechnics i didn't get to see any of that you did oh my god in philly (laughs) yes yes matt has a friend named dorian shout out to dorian um she is Try Guys fan that will give us Super any fan. information she's that's happening on the internet. She's the best. Ooh. She's yeah. a sleuth. If you need to know something about someone, she'll find them on the internet. Do you want to yeah. ask her about the Vanderpump sitch? No, well, she only knows about Try Guys. Oh. oh. She's Try Guys specific. I thought she was like just the greatest internet sleuth she is. She, of our she'll generation. She'll find too. She is. Yeah. Should I tell a story about how I doxed Eugene or no? <laughs> and Dorian. 
Sorry. <laughs> this one time, Matt and I were sitting right. on the couch, and I took a really cute uh, picture of Matt, and I posted it. I never it. told Eugene this story. <laughs> Oops, so you're outing posted. yourself. It's we'll okay. He won't be now. mad. He won't be mad. I it was a I long time ago. Once. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. But um, he was holding pesto and bop and just in the middle of the screen, giant and perfectly clear was their phone number. <laughs> no. Whoops. But the way it relates to Dorian is Dorian texted Matt. Like right away. Like, yeah, she was right like, away. um, you just dropped Eugene's phone. Phone number? Because Matt also reposted the picture. Oh my God, both of you. <laughs> you know I love a regram. It was. I can't, I can't you, so for a funny. while you only regrammed. I mean, what do you mean a while? It's still happening. Create, oh, if they're tagging you, they're wanting you to regram it. Yeah. You know? Oh Matt, I always look at Matt's Instagram and he's, I'm like, the rest of us are just doing the legwork. <laughs> <laughs> if you're tagging me, you're asking me to, to, to regram it. I feel like Re-gram. that was the unspoken rule. <laughs> You're not um, wrong. He says yes to everyone. But yes, Dorian was at the show that I went to yeah. that had pyrotechnics. And Maggie, we went to the well. Philly show uh, and they actually um, had a little fire after the show. <laughs> <laughs> a little fire? A little fire after the show. Oh, yeah. that's the one where something caught on fire? Yeah, something caught on fire. And Dorian was like, what's that? And we were all like, fire. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, well, Dorian's but, coming yeah. with me to see Key Show in New York. <laughs> oh, Shout out to Dorian. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Dorian. Love. Love. But yeah, the pyrotechnics were really cool, but also did not happen at every No, there are only a couple. Juncture. So I never I'm saw it. I don't remember which yeah. other ones had it. I think LA had it. New York. Because it was LA so expensive it. to do it because you have to get like it. extra insurance and all this yeah. stuff. And you have to get the fire marshal to come in. Yeah. yeah. And they Clear do a it. test. And then Trust they, me, and then I was just trying to roll on something with a fire on a sound stage. It's very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't even paying for the fire. The fire came <laughs> with. I just the all the naturally. stuff around the fire was so yeah. expensive. Yeah. I was like, no, there are better ways to use thousands of dollars. Yeah. yeah. New appreciation for fire at concerts. <laughs> yeah. We see you. Oh, and lasers. And lasers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Love a laser That's operator. Crazy. Do you guys remember like when you first saw the show or as the show was going on, was there any part that you were always like, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Like, wow. All like, of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a, I don't know. I may be biased, but the <laughs> fact that the boys, they're multi hyphenates, like not all YouTubers, TikTokers. I don't know. I just, I have so much love and adoration for all of them. And I think they're all so talented. And to see them on a video medium, to being able to perform and just command a stage like that, I just had so much awe and respect for them. Yeah. I know that you can easily edit and like sift together a video in your own format, whatever, whatever. But to see them on stage, I was just so, wow. Wow. Yeah. To me, it was just like so professional. I mean, maybe because I had seen it after they had done a lot of them. (laughs) Yeah. But it was just so professional. You know what I mean? Which was. They had costumes. Really cool. Yeah. Like it was like everything was there and everything like fit perfectly and was like everything was so smooth and it was just like so professional. I was like, wow. Yeah. They like really did it. I think mine was, I mean, all of it was beautiful. Yes, I'm not go everything. Everybody was beautiful. <laughs> Everyone's a special angel. But Eugene's part, every yeah. time I saw it, I was like more in awe of what he was doing. And like yeah. the way he curated the music was very like to make it very emotional. Mm-hmm. And just to look around the audience and see all the kids that related to it mm-hmm. or felt seen by it. I it always like it makes me want to cry now. I'm like, it was mm-hmm. so beautiful because mm-hmm. I've said this to Matt before that I know on tour people would give when they met the guys would lay a lot of heavy stuff on them in very short amounts of time. Um, and I always felt like Eugene mm-hmm. got the biggest brunt of that because of how many people feel seen and heard and, mm-hmm. um, how many people he's like helped sort Mm -hmm. of express themselves for who they are. So like when you're sitting there in a big crowd and you see like a kid next to you, that's got like rainbow hair and is crying and like vibing and just like loving life. And then like their parents sitting next to them. It's just Mm -hmm. like, so cute. Yeah, I just loved it. Every time it got to that part, I almost liked watching the people in the audience just <laughs> as much reactions. as I liked yes. watching Eugene perform. Yes. Yes. That and that's really just special. such an indication of the kind of space they've carved out on the internet mm-hmm. for people. I mean, they got to meet a lot of fans. A lot of fans. Like so, so many fans. So they got to hear so many stories and mm-hmm. 
you know, mm-hmm. see why people like them and stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was also a good like morale boost for them. Yeah, I think it was kind of <laughs> oh, yeah. pivotal you know? for them because yeah. the doc goes into this a little bit, but like people don't hear that you're a YouTuber and think that sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. in a lot of ways, and maybe that's just an indication of being in coastal cities, like in New York and in LA, people are like, you know, our friends, a lot of my friends make TV shows and films and mm-hmm. YouTube doesn't sound like meaningful. And I think the boys grappled with some of that too. You know, they mm-hmm. wanted to make a Food Network show because <clears throat> having the resume of traditional media of what we grew up with felt like an important thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when they went on tour and they could actually meet the people who are watching their videos and see the space they've created on the internet for people to relate to or find authenticity and sincerity, it all became like so much more meaningful, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And the internet is a volatile place, right? Like Mm -hmm. there are wonderful parts of it. There are horrible parts of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes, and I think we can all relate in this room, the one really mean comment sticks with you more than a hundred really nice comments. So sometimes when you're seeing a whole group of people, even though, yes, that whole group of people in the audience was less people than like who watched one video, seeing all those people be supportive and kind and uplifting and just love and life kind of helps you forget about some of those Mm -hmm. meaner moments that can tend to pop up and occupy your brain Mm -hmm. for good or bad. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, I thought you were going to say your favorite part of the show, Becky, was me. Yeah. Well, I mean, it always <laughs> is. Me. Um, I would say the screams. I mean, my picture was in there. You the know? screams that came. I got, I got screams. When Matt. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't get scouted. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the screams uh, that came when sweet Matt's face popped up. I know. People were just like. They went bonkers for this hottie. Yeah. I would premature (laughs) scream sometimes because I knew it was coming. Uh (laughs) And I'd be like, get ready. Yeah. For the audience, I guess we can explain. There was like a little slideshow like moments. And I think the lyrics are, yeah, boyfriend. Your your girlfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. And it's a photo of Matt. Yeah. And the audience would go buck wild. And I think that was one of the first times that, uh, we addressed your existence. I know, right? <laughs> you didn't exist before that. Yeah. I know. Matt it's in your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Our imaginary friend, Matt. Yeah. And I think, did you get soft launched then on Instagram? That was a, that was yeah. a soft that launch. You became mm-hmm. yeah. jo- Matthew Joseph McLean. Yeah. 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 That's when I got the Insta. What was your favorite experience related to the tour? Because you got to travel. We got to do fun oh, yeah. stuff. You guys mm-hmm. all went to Australia. We went, we literally went to Asia for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was so cool. So what was your that favorite was my part? favorite part was yeah. getting to go to Singapore. Yeah. Because Keith and I had never been out of the country before that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got passports. <laughs> that was oh my gosh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I feel like even when we were in Australia, they were still working because they had That's a tour true. show to do. And then they did the um, VidCon that was out there. So I feel like once we got to Singapore, that was when everyone kind of like, relaxed yeah and was like okay we have a show to do here it's gonna be really great but we also were able to like go out and Mm -hmm. eat and eat way too much food at the hawker centers Mm -hmm. and like just kind of chill as opposed to being like super work focused Mm yeah do you guys have highlights from singapore i think it was just eating food the food the hawker centers were just so good and keith and i were very lucky that mike chen was there one day and I was like sick by the end of Singapore because I had gone, I think right before that is when we had gone vegan for the book. Mm. And we had kind of continued that onward a little bit and definitely like cook more plant-based at home now. But I was not used to eating that much meat. Mm. Right. So I was just like, I by the, the last carbs, day, yeah. yeah, I was really nauseous. But then Keith was like, well, Mike Chen's here and he's (laughs) going to take us to a hawker center and he's been there like a billion times Uh and 
he also told us some like interesting history about how mm. the hawker stalls that are there, a lot of the younger generations don't want to take over the hawker st stands. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to do what their parents did, which is totally understandable, but it's such a huge part of the culture there that in 10, 15 years, like a lot of those places might Won't not be exist. there. Oh, and right. when he said that, I was like, okay, I got to go. I got to go. I got to eat more. Yeah. I got to eat more. And I, I mean, everything he gave us was absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. Delish. Delicious. Delish. Well, when we were in Australia, we got to, we were there for like a week, right? We were there for mm -hmm. kind of a while. So they were working, but we weren't working. What were you we doing? We were on vacation. We got to have fun. <laughs> when they went off to work in the morning, what did we, you guys do? We got to like, you know, just traipse around Melbourne and like go to different mm -hmm. spots mm -hmm. and did you beach? Absorb the did city. you coffee shop? Did you? It was like winter there. It was, oh. it was, like it was really cold. cold. Yeah. Okay. Um, but definitely wanders. coffee Chillers. shops. Mm -hmm. Got to like see different parts of the city. Lots mm -hmm. of like walking. Just like absorb the energy. Yeah. We did that one tour that was really nice. We got to go to one of the beaches, even though it was cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Walk around a garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Sydney. And Which is beautiful. when I had studied abroad in Europe, like a lot of Australians go there. So mm -hmm. I actually got to see some of my friends that I had met like forever mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. In Sydney when we went. So That's that was cool. cool. Yeah. But it's so far. It's so far to get there. From it's so so How long is the flight? Oh, uh, like 16 hours. Like something? forever. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. far. It was long. Our flight that we were on left at like 1130 at night. Uh -huh. And we we're like, that'll be fine. We'll sleep, whatever. We had a couple drinks before. Had a couple drinks when we got on the plane. Uh -huh. Flew for two hours. And then the plane had to turn around and go back to L.A. <gasps> because there was an issue with some cooling unit. No. And I also learned that's where they dump um, like the gas out of the plane because you can't land too heavy. And I asked the pilot, I was like, is that like bad for the environment? He's like, I mean, it's worse for us to land too heavy, if you know what I mean. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was like, okay. So our trip, because of that two hour delay and going back. Wait, so you went two hours out and two hours back. Two hours so back. So four, four hour hours delay. for nothing. Yeah. That on the flight. And the flight staff can't work that long on, it's like a 16, 17 hour flight. So they would be working like almost 24 hours and that's not okay. Yeah. So we were originally going to get rerouted to a different part of Australia. No, no, no. And then take another plane, which thankfully did not happen. They no, were able to work fun. it out so that people got their breaks. Whoa. But we were, I had never experienced jet lag before. Uh, we'll do <laughs> my it. first jet lag. Okay, wait. So 11 30, 12 30, 1 30, 2 30, 3 30. So you mm -hmm. get back to LAX at like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. You have to get off the plane. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't get off the plane, which was nice. They were able to fix everything while we were still on it. Isn't mm -hmm. that even nice? I would have been irate. You're like halfway through the night and like you've stuck gone in your seat. nowhere. Yeah. I definitely felt it ill. Been <laughs> yeah, because it was so late and like. I definitely wouldn't have had that extra glass of champagne. No. Had I known. Why didn't? Yeah. Why couldn't they land at another airport domestic nearby? airport? That's crazy. Anyway, moving on. There was no domestic airport. You start going over the ocean. Oh, oh you're yeah. right. like, we got to stop in Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was, I was like, like, we got to stop in Hawaii to get. Are we in New York? Fiji, you know? yeah. Are we on the East Coast? Go to North Carolina. Yeah. And no, just you go take the other way. Right, right, right. Um But yeah, that jet lag was crazy. My jet lag is always worse. Going east. Yes. Becky, that sounds like a nightmare. It was awful. I did not enjoy I'm not it. getting over it. Like, I'm never leaving enjoy. the country again. It was, yeah. It was also like, I was really excited because it was the first time I'd ever flown because thanks VidCon, they paid for the seats, uh -huh. was business class. Oh, yeah. And I had never flown that way before. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. It's nice. I mean. I thought it was great. It's nice. What was your favorite part of like going to Australia and Singapore, Mags? We, Matt, Eugene, and Zach and I went to New Zealand before, and I thought that was yeah, New Zealand was cool. beautiful. I don't know what I was expecting New Zealand to look like, but it completely just shocked me how beautiful, how green, how snowy, how coastal. We just saw so many different terrains within like two different cities. Mm -hmm. Um, did you feel like you were in Lord of the Rings? I did. We didn't even get to do the Lord of the Rings okay. tour because we didn't have enough days, but it was enough to wow me. I'd go back if it wasn't so far and expensive, <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I'd like to explore different parts of Australia as well, but it really floored me. It was really yeah. cool. Um, I do remember, do you remember that jet boat that we took that like the British royalty also had photos of and it was raining that day and me, you, Eugene, Zach and I looked at each other. We're like, are we going to go oh on this God. jet boat in the rain? And <sighs> Eugene yes. and Matt both had like 
sunglasses and like a hooded cap. Like Maggie had no sunglasses. Her jacket was not waterproof and it didn't have a hood. And I just remember being like darted with uh, rain the entire time. Matt was like like screaming. So you loved it? I hated it and Matt bought the photo. I was like, look at this photo. Well, because it's like you're in this like canyon and it's like, this like little motorboat that like zooms you through the canyon like, like, a, like a ride. Whoa, it's like a ride yeah. type thing. So it only lasted like 20 minutes, maybe. It was for a the long ride. 20 minutes. But <laughs> it was pelted in the face. It was definitely raining. You know, so when you're going <laughs> yeah. fast, the rain feels like Harder. pellets on your face. You know, and we were like, like the like only people in the boat. And I think it was like a 20 person boat. Uh, like occupancy and I was yeah. like guys we did that and then we went to this beautiful spa afterward and like yeah. did hot tubs Ooh. which was you know, looking Earned. over like yeah. the beautiful views oh that's nice you know, yeah, was cool. to make up okay, for okay I'm back in I'm back, <laughs> back in I'm to ready to make up for it <laughs> I know all the boys were like covered and I was just like complete like just my shirt at my um at my forehead, just so upset. Maggie saw none of the canyon. <laughs> I saw nothing. And Zach was like, this is so cool. I'm like, I'm so glad you have glasses. <laughs> yeah, Being we did anywhere. that. And we did the glacier, which that <gasps> was also really crazy. Glacier. <sighs> Talk about feeling like you're going to crash. Because yeah. you're like in this little teeny tiny helicopter. And you go up and oh, they're like going out. through yeah. all like the mountains, like so close. Like it also felt like a roller coaster ride. And then you land like at the very top on this glacier where you have like 360 views. I mean, yeah. it was really cool, mm-hmm. but And it rains like really 70% of the year. So sometimes weather conditions aren't yeah. in your favor. And we were only there for like three days. So we got a call, I think the day we landed mm-hmm. and they were like, it's going to rain tomorrow. Would you guys like to come today? So we like dropped our bags yeah, and we like made it happen. We're like, let's go. Yeah. What was the name of the national park that we went to after the glacier? Milford Sound. Milford Sound, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, which was really Milford cool. Sound. Is that a music yeah. festival? Are you thinking about Mumford and Sons? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna Google it. I thought there's a music festival that something sounds. Um I mean that sounds like a music festival. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um Yeah, the other thing that we didn't do, which now like is kind of crazy, was there's they do a lot of volcano stuff there. You Ooh. can go trek to the volcano. Are they active? But one was active and all these people <gasps> got really hurt, injured and no. died because it was like the volcano erupted, but it wasn't lava. It was all steam. <gasps> I watched that documentary. So they were like steamed. Yeah. yeah. What steamed? about the couple? They got steamed. No, it, like was a, it was about like all the people that were on there. Oh, oh no. Mm-hmm. It was really scary. That's and there was one guy, I remember he had a helicopter and his helicopter was like destroyed, yeah. but he had the forethought to jump in the water. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so the steam yeah. didn't get, he just held his breath for like, a bajillion as long as he could things yeah but it was there's a documentary on netflix about it i forget what it's called oh my gosh but it was honestly it was so sad because like one of the boys in it his entire family died oh my gosh and it was one of those things where i was like oh god nature is scary nature is so scary yeah unpredictable yeah Woo. And it's like one of the, that was like one of the main tourist attractions to go do is go see like the volcanoes. Volcanoes there, so. yeah. and bungee jumping was like oh a God. big one. I will never <gasps> do bungee jumping. That is so scary. I know. Yeah, I can't imagine Asking what to crack that your does. head on the pavement like an egg. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel <laughs> like, like an egg. Like seriously, an egg. like the visual I have. The way just watching your someone's body. spine. I was yeah. like, Zach will not be doing that. No. <laughs> Absolutely Zach not. Zach would break midair. Yeah. Zach, Zach would snap a party, become really long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Like a like, stretch like of noodle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He'd be noodles. Or a slinky dog, you know. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um. What would you guys think if the boys went on another tour? Where would we, where would we want them to go? Or no, what would you like, think? What would you think of it if if oh. Zach or Eugene came oh up gosh. to and Rachel? Like oh. question for you as well. If they came She's up like to you and they were scenario. like, <laughs> "Yeah, we want to do another tour, Rach. Let's make it happen." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what tour are they going to do in this instance. Who knows? A, a live musical tour again? Who knows? Mm. Whatever their heart desires, Rachel. You know. <laughs> I know. I do know. Um, <laughs> Anything goes with those boys. We can talk about it. Yeah. Where are we going? Can we go to Paris? That's what I was going to say. Ooh. We didn't Frost. like somewhere like maybe Europe would be Yeah. Great. Can we do a European tour? Okay. So you want more of the destination tours. Yeah. I love the destination <laughs> tours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you, <laughs> Let's do it now. Becky, organize. Let's do okay, it. Okay. Here you go. I'll get on the group <laughs> chat. 
What would I think? Ugh. Yeah, if Zach was like, I want to go like, on another oh. tour. <laughs> I feel like I am supportive. Zach doesn't need to ask permission. He can do whatever his little butt wants. <laughs> I know there will be, I mean, if it's not touring, it's something else, I'm sure. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He finagles his way. <laughs> There's always more. Mm-hmm. More is more. More is more. more, is, more. is there any part of you guys that wishes you would have gone on tour with them that wasn't an option there's not mm-hmm. enough space for yeah everyone but um is there any part of you that was like oh that would have been fun to be like a groupie <laughs> <laughs> yeah a groupie. following on the tour the whole time. yeah to be a band-aid a band-aid <laughs> We'd have like our own little for all you young kids listening. That's yeah. an almost famous reference. <laughs> um, yeah, you oh could, God, yeah. you know, you can move the speakers. You could carry the costumes in and out. I don't know. Do you just wish you had been Those able to stinky, go? Stinky, stinky cons- costumes. No. Okay. <laughs> no explanation. <laughs> I wish I could have seen more of the shows. I only saw mm-hmm. two of them, but I wouldn't want to, have to be part of the whole thing the whole time. That's very tiring. Like, yeah. And like they would like go to sleep in one city, wake up in another, do it again. So it's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, they didn't really get to enjoy the destinations and the stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's really all about the performance is what they're there for. Yeah, they mm-hmm. basically sleep right? all day because they'd be traveling overnight, wake up in a new city. I think they would like wake up cl- closer to 10 and then they would like kind of prep the entire day. And then working would start whenever the show started, which would, I think it was like closer to seven. And then they just do it over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. I would only go if we had kids. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go by myself. Mm-hmm. I was like, but if we had a family, like I know Hanson takes their family everywhere. Oh well, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like if you is have Hansen the means, still touring? <laughs> yeah, you leave them alone. <laughs> they are. I think so. They did a tour. I don't oh. know. Hanson told Keith this. They did a video. Oh, okay. Uh, did a video yeah. with Hanson. Yeah. Oh right. But yeah, if I had a family, I would go on tour just because I'd be like, these kids need a father. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Do you I went wish, on one Lou Do you tour. wish you could have gone on the last tour? Because you were on maternity leave last time. So I'm on maternity leave. leave. So if you didn't have kids, would you be sleeping? Would on you that have bus? been on that tour? Would you have been on that would bus? Would you have been on the tour? <gasps> would you have been in that fifth bed on the bus? <laughs> Bunkin'. <laughs> I don't know. At one point, um, before the tour, it was just mentioned um by someone like, wow, it would really be ideal for you and Watson to shoot the documentary so you could kind of come on tour mm. and direct it and he mm-hmm. could shoot it and that would have like been really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, that does seem like a good duo and a lot of fun. Oh, 100%. And then I was like, we no. would watch the babies. <laughs> <laughs> the babies were like- They were like a week old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were like three months old and there were two of them. It's like, not You happening. can eat hot dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> You want a smoothie? Mac and, and cheese. Becky. Yeah, you want That's a smoothie? That's what kids like, right? Mac and cheese? They were three months old. What a green juice, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Babies like pyro. Yeah. <laughs> they could have run sound. Like. Um, yeah, so it just wasn't going to happen. But I was like, oh, yeah, if this had been last summer, that would have been really cool. Mm. If they go on a tour again, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, what if it's this summer, Rach? It's not this summer, guys. <laughs> it's not this summer. Are you sure? not this summer. Are you trying to plan sure? something, Becky? It's not this I'm summer. I'm a hundred percent sure. I but plan let's say out they the year you. at the top of the year. It's not this summer. Let's say they asked you. Yeah, let's check back tomorrow video. Let's check back tomorrow. This is fake. This is fantasy land. Don't spread misinformation on the internet. But let's say they asked you, would you go this uh, summer and sleep? Really, I want to know if you would sleep on the tour bus. <laughs> well, at this point, <laughs> how long are we going for? I don't know, but we're in fantasy land, so we could do whatever we want. Okay. <laughs> if we're going on a European tour, yeah. <laughs> Watson can shoot it. June and Poppy are coming. We all yeah. got to go. If I'm going, like when we Put did- Put those kids to work. <laughs> no, no, no. Start their Coogan They're accounts. There for fun. <laughs> What's a Coogan Funties. account, but for um, like tech kids? <laughs> What's a what? Like a, a you know the Coogan a Coogan fund? It's when you have like a child actor. Oh. It's the percentage that goes into their fund. But what's oh. that for like- Mm. An underage teenage worker that's running sound. I don't know. <laughs> the Nepo babies, June and Poppy, <laughs> will make their. <laughs> will make their <laughs> I'll um, Google. <laughs> but if we were just going for two weeks or three weeks, I would be like, oh, how great. I can just focus on work for a minute mm-hmm. and not live the duality that is being a working parent, mm-hmm. um, which is really nice. Like when we did the Food Network show, we were only gone out of California for like, I don't know. 12 days or something, 14 days. And yeah, yeah, I just went. 
Yeah. yeah. It's easier when it's like it's a shorter nice, But if we were time. going for like two months or something, yeah. I'm hauling the crew. Yeah. The crew. The crew. They're going to be the, the new whole crew. crew. The whole crew. Well, there are two parts to that. One, I'm not just, I'm not going to leave June and Poppy for months at a time. It's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. And two, they're little and adaptable enough to have like experiences like that. Like it's no big deal to pull them out of preschool or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How fun. Also, How when do fun. kids remember things? Like, would they remember? Are they the remembering age? The going phrase, like which five. comforts a lot of parents, is they don't remember anything before five. And we're all like, phew. I'm sure some people have <laughs> memories before five. <laughs> Come off in the comments. What have you done you that you want them to remember, did. Rachel? Um, lots of things. Like, as you're a new parent, you're like, oh, shit. Am I fucking you up? <laughs> I hope not. But you won't remember. Never. Okay. They'll forget. Um, <laughs> But, you know, they're getting to a memory age. And I think if you tell them stories, they remember that, right? So yeah. I'll be like, mm-hmm. when you came to Europe and you ate Nutella crepes, you had the best time, you know. It's I your the- favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. <laughs> For your birthday, we're going to give you your favorite food. Yeah. Carrots. <laughs> carrots. 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 <laughs> French carrots. Um, I don't know why I sounded creepy there, but <laughs> like if you tell them stories about it, they'll remember it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Okay. So Zach, Keith, Eugene, when's our European tour with the babies? Yeah. Yeah. When are we going? Where are we going? Let us know. Um, sound off in the comments what other videos you want us to tell you about the BTS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We touched on it a little bit, but Eugene's coming out video. Mm-hmm. There's a secret girlfriend who is now a not so secret wife. <laughs> What was going a on? A senora? Yeah, what was going on in our lives at that time that you guys would want to know about? And what um, videos you want us to look back on? What are some of your favorite videos? Yeah. We have our know. personal favorites. Sound off in the comments. Sound off. But for now, make sure you're washing your hands, getting vaccinated for everything you need to be vaccinated for, being nice to people, tipping your servers, um, peeing after sex, mm-hmm. and that's it. That's it. Thanks for sitting with us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.